Hey, I'm Bob, and I want to talk about uh, two of the Oscar live action short film nominees, and that would be the first one is called Night Ride, the other one is called La Pupil, Pupil, the Pupil. Okay, the first one, Night Ride, I actually found on uh, YouTube. Really wasn't that hard to track down. Has subtitles. Uh, it's it's a great little short. Um, centers around a lady who is waiting in the snow for a tram, and then the operator gets off at her stop and then just goes somewhere to the bathroom, I'm presuming, and just leaves her there. So she's like, it's freezing outside. I want, I want to go inside. She goes inside and she's there waiting. And then suddenly someone else gets on thinking that she is the operator. Um, and she's starting to play with the buttons and these kinds of things. Anyway, she basically hijacks the tram and goes on her little joy ride. Right now, when she gets to the next platform, um, it, it's the hijinks just sort of kind of like keep leveling up, but it's never like, goofy or silly it actually is pretty serious and it kind of you're going to get why the oscars would like it because it definitely has sort of a trans bullying message going on uh i gotta be honest it doesn't really bother me because it could have just been anybody like it's just it's completely a bull a douchebag bully um in a situation and I don't know. I, I thought it was actually very well executed. It's a very, it's a, it's a little short. It's only a few minutes. It's like what, 15, 20 minutes long. Um, I really thought it was actually very, very good. Um, I really think the actress that plays Ebba does a really, really great job. Um, she's a little person. So I'm sure that's good. They get the little Oscar points for all of these little silly things that don't really matter. And that basically they're just trying to showcase this transphobic jack wagon harassing this person who he thought was a woman and then the the wig um i don't know what it was ebba slams the brakes on and the wig comes off and therefore he knows that it's really a guy and um it's it's just it's it's not bad but what is really good is how they do a little twist ending to it all uh and i like it i like ebba was very clever how she gets herself out of the situation so she's not going to be responsible for basically stealing the tram and uh, it, it seemed also kind of, I don't know, oh man, I hate to say this, but I don't want to say believable, but if I actually heard a story where something like this actually happened, it really, really wouldn't shock me as much as it should. <laughs> Maybe it would have more like five years ago, but now the world is so strange and odd that someone just taking off in the tram and start picking people up and then having sort of a run in with someone else. And then was able to somehow share the story later on. <laughs> I would actually buy this could happen. It, it's, it's absurd on its face, but then it's also not. And I think this is where the Oscar nomination is credited because the execution of the short is really pretty good. Um, I really liked it. I love how the ending uh, plays out with the police it's all very quick. Obviously, it's a short film, so it's all it all moves very fast. Um, the second one, The Pupil. The Pupil is actually um, a Disney product, right? Because Disney actually has, I know this is not what people want to hear, right? Because they only want to hear about like how many nominations did this film have or that film have. But Disney owns other companies, and they have more nominations than any other company does, the Disney brand in some way, shape, or form. And this is one of them. It's called The Pupils. It's an Italian short about a Catholic boarding school. And it's set at uh, Christmas, the Advent time, right up before Christmas. And it centers around a bunch of mischievous little girls. Um, and then you have sort of a little setup where um, one of the girls is going home for Christmas. So you sort of see some of the uh, tension with as far as some have family, some don't. And then um, you have this one little girl. Her name is Serafina. And um, she sees this lady at the gate who wants to get in. And you have all these different little moments. You're, you're, you're kind of led along the path of, of figuring out which of the key girls and what their personalities are. So you're learning a little bit about Serafina, learning about some of the others, how she doesn't really fit in, how some of the other girls behave. But things come to a head with this lady when they come to the gate because she's a rich lady. She's looking for prayer because, um, well, Anyway, so that's what's going to come to happen is this woman that wants prayer. So the girls and the and, and the nuns that are taking care of them are setting up and dressing them up um, for this Christmas play because we're set during a war. I assume this is World War One, and 
there's a sick girl, nun cliches, and all this kind of thing. It's kind of funny because <laughs> Seraphina accidentally touches the radio and it plays like music, and they all start singing and dancing. Of course, this is evil. You know, they have their they have soap put on their mouths. Uh, it, it is sort of like a lot of little heavy innuendos and things like that, but also played with little comedic children stuff. And I have to be honest, this comedy actually works better than most of the things we're told are comedies. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it's just because of the absurdity of, of our past where we would like people thought listening to music like that would condemn you to hell or we could wash things out of your mouth with soap and, just, and treating little little kids this way would be the right way to condition their behavior. So, okay. So this rich lady has this cake. There's jokes about how many eggs she had to use. Obviously, because of this time, it's madness out there. Right? No one has money. It's war-torn country, that kind of thing. And then come to find out, because these girls are being set up in this ridiculous um, Christmas play scenario, which is going to come to pass. And we learn the rich lady doesn't even want prayer for someone in war, she wants prayer because um, he's got a, He's a, he's got another woman. <laughs> he's a cheater, and you're like, what? Like, what? What are we doing? And Serafina just, you know, she she she's her own little thing. She 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 really wins you over in this film because it's all about her. And the nuns are trying to um, uh, play this game with the bishop. So they've, they've sent a herald to the bishop. They're going to send this cake that they've got this giant, massive cake that's been delivered. It's beautiful cake. It's bright red. And they unveil the cake. And it's like, think about the children who have nothing on their table, right? Because they think they're going to get this cake. And they're just being told that they should make this sacrifice for Christ. They should give up their slice, right? They're being told to do this. And it's not just a lesson, right? This woman is evil. She's evil. It's not a lesson to these girls. It's evil, right? Manipulative, right? Because you're not quite sure. Are they going to get pieces too? Are the, only the bishops going to get pieces? Who's getting the pieces, right? So the seraphine is like, well, wait a minute. Um, I'm not I'm not agreeing to your terms. They have a hand raised. And this little girl is like, I'm wicked. And she's like, why would you say that? She, she is basically going against what the nuns want done with this perfect, beautiful cake. And she says, well, I'm wicked. I have to have my cake. I, I can't I can't sacrifice. For, I'm not good enough. You said I wasn't good enough. So she demands to get her cake, and they have to give her the cake. And that's where the twist. And the twist goes crazy with these other pieces of the short. There's a lot of elements in this short. And this is why I got nominated, because the production on this short and the amount of characters that you have, and you don't have to know much of anything about them, really, um, as far as like a chimney sweep and the dog and all these kinds of things, right? <laughs> and it's just, man, I tell you what, I was really impressed. I thought it was kind of fun. And then, of course, the way it ends with Serafina, she has, you know, she finds a way to win the girls over. And it's really, it's really also sweet and nice, right? There's lots of little metaphors and lots of little pieces that are kind of played into this. And it's also like a little bit of commentary on what life was like during the war and, and some of that too. So I can see the pupil also winning. I, I don't really know between the two who I would vote for. I would probably have to watch it all again and see if I can kind of whittle it down. Um, I haven't found the other three yet. You know, you have to find them and you have to find sub. I have to have subtitles. Um, so yeah, if you look up those other films, I'm, I'm going to try to track them down for myself and uh, see if I can get those for you. But, uh, they're both little fun, little watches. I'll put, I'll try to get the links there for you. Um, the best I can, as far as the information and you can track them down for yourself. So anyway, that's my thought, a little Oscar update for you, a little review on something that's probably not very commonplace, but I thought I would throw it out there for you guys. Thanks again. I'm pops. This is Kevin Murphy from Rip tracks and mystery science theater 3000. Hey, this is Mark from Casting Crown. Hey, this is Alan Powell from the film The Song. Hey, this is Christian Kane. This is Colin Mockery. Hello, everybody. This is Ione Singleton, a.k.a. T-Dog from The Walking Dead. And you are listening to my main man, Brandon.